One of the biggest problems if you're learning how to play jazz guitar or actually any instrument in any genre is that you do not have that much time to practice. This is something that we all run into. I think everybody has this problem. And at the same time, if you can find just a little bit of time to work on playing your instrument just for a few minutes every day, then you'll see that you also progress a lot more. So this is about planning because you want to spend those few minutes as efficiently as possible. In this video, I'm going to show you a 10 minute practice routine. I'm going to talk about what I think should be in a practice routine like that and how you make the most out of such a short amount of time. My name is Jens Larsen. Learn jazz, make music. This first exercise is just a basic chromatic exercise. The one I'm playing is across the entire neck. It doesn't have to be that, it's not really that important. You can stay in one position, play a spider exercise, play another kind of chromatic exercise. It's about warming up, getting used to playing the instrument and the feel of that, how it sounds, how it responds. And then you can move on to playing something that's a little bit closer to something that you need when you're making music. The next two minutes, I would suggest you work on practicing scales. So when I talk about practicing scales, I mean that you have to play the scale itself, but you also have to do some exercises within those scales. And I would suggest you do stuff like triads and diatonic seventh chords, maybe some intervals, different patterns with triads, because those are the things that you need when you're improvising. Those are the structures that you're using when you're making lines, when you're playing a solo. So you need to practice them also when you're practicing technique. When you have a practice routine like this and you're practicing every day, then it's also very important that you change things up. So don't always play the same position or don't always play the same keys. If you're practicing, I would suggest you practice scales in different keys in every session and that you also make sure to change around in which position you're playing or the kind of exercises you're doing in the different keys. The more variation you create with this, the more flexible you're going to be. And that's really going to be useful once you start improvising and once you apply this to a piece of music. I'm also very curious what kind of patterns, what kind of structures do you practice your scales in? So if you have some good ideas or something you really like to use that you think is really useful, then share that in the comments. The way I've set it up in this video is that I'm playing in one position and I'm playing six different keys. For each key, I'm playing first the scale and then some exercise in that scale. Of course, this means that if I do it like this, I can actually in two days cover all 12 keys and I can move around in different positions. And that way I can just create a lot of different variations. And of course I can also shift around which keys I'm going to do triads in or intervals or uh, seventh chords. If you want to play the exercises a little bit slower, then you can go down to four keys, then it's just gonna take you three days to cover all keys, but you're still gonna have the benefit of playing different keys and covering all keys in a few days. Since I'm doing all the scale practice in position, then it makes sense to also just take some stuff along the neck. And in this case, I'm working with all the diatonic triads and I'm doing that in D major across the neck. Again, this is something where you can change the key. You can also change to maybe another type of scale to so do the same thing with melodic minor uh, or with the harmonic minor. And in that way, just really get good at knowing those scales and knowing the diatonic harmony and being able to play it along the neck.
Now that we've worked on some scales and some technique, then it makes sense to start playing some actual music, which is of course the point of the whole thing. And uh, in this case, I would suggest maybe bridging the gap between technique and music by playing a technical exercise through a song. So in this case, I'm playing the diatonic arpeggios through the song Set and All. Jumping right in and playing the entire form with arpeggios is fairly difficult, in fact, if you didn't practice it before. So the way you probably want to do this if you're working on a song is to take first the A part and then work on that for a few days. Once you start to get that into your system, you probably only need to repeat it and then you can start working on the B part and in that way you piece the different pieces together. This is also where knowing the form and understanding how a piece is constructed really helps you practice it better. A big part of becoming a better improviser is also that you're expanding your vocabulary and that you're improving the way that you phrase. So in the video here I am in fact reading a Joe Pass solo from one of his books. That's one way of getting really acquainted with how his lines sound and also finding a way to actually play that material. You can do this in many ways. You can also just take a single lick and then try and make some variations on that or take a shorter etude and then play that in a few different ways. So there are many ways you can work on this. This is just one of them where I'm working a little bit on reading but also on sort of getting more familiar with some new vocabulary. If you want to become a better jazz musician, then you have to spend time actually playing jazz because that's what it's all about. So here I'm playing a solo and I'm playing a solo over Satin Doll because that was also the song that I was using for the arpeggios. So the whole thing is kind of connected in that way. So a 10 minute routine like this is going to help you keep in shape, and stay in form, you're making music every day, you're playing the instrument, and you are also working on and improving some of the basic, but very important things that you need to work on all the time. And it's also going to help you stay in shape so that when you have more time, if you have an hour, if you have two hours at some point, then you're also in shape to actually work on that and start working on a transcription or learning a new song, maybe a longer solo, and in that way, get more out of that period, which is also gonna make everything more efficient and speed up your learning process. What would your 10 minute practice routine look like? Is there something that I didn't go over, that I didn't cover? Because of course I left out some things that I find to be not important enough or maybe too time consuming. One of them being transcription and another one being theory. Leave a comment with what you think should be included or if you think that I left out something that's really important. And if you can find more time to practice and you wanna get there a little bit faster, then check out this video where I'm going over a 30 minute practice routine. There are quite a few skills in this video that are not included in the video that you're on now because 10 minutes, well, you can't include everything. There are a few things in there that I think are really important that you probably want to check out. Thank you for watching. See you next week.